Well, good afternoon and welcome back to my beautiful office. Very dreary and miserable day today. But hey, it's still winter. So that's what we're putting up with at the minute. It's been a very wit, wit, wet and miserable winter, that is for sure. And I haven't really found a connection with the forest in the last three months or so. Yeah, I come walking in, do my stuff, check on my trail cameras, all that sort of stuff, and I find it hard to tune into nature. But just then, I stopped listening to the birds all of a sudden. Oh, you get the gist of what I'm trying to do there. I'm trying to click my fingers, ain't working with the gloves on. Yeah, I just tuned into nature all of a sudden. It's a weird experience. When that happens when you don't have it for so long and then it comes back i'm just so aware of everything that's going on in here at the minute it's awesome all right so a quick catch up with the agile antichinus as far as my nesting boxes go checked it this morning saturday morning take out the card take it home check it out what's going on man Got something amazing, a little insight into the breeding behavior. So let me clarify that a little bit more. It is breeding season for the Agile Antichinus right now. In July, it's sort of the start of it. it builds up and get its, they get a lot more active with breeding in August, but some of them do start earlier and it's what i saw this morning in my trail camera it was an amazing bit of footage that i have that i'll share with you in a minute so i'm going through my uh, little clips out of the trail camera from during the week and yesterday one of the uh, females that's been going into the nesting box number one and checking it out daily and sometimes sleeping in there she had a visitor, a male, positive, from what I can see of the genitals sticking out as he's coming down into the down to the nest and checking it out. Uh, yeah, definitely a male. And he's come in there twice during the week, but yesterday the female was in the nest and she's popped out to have a look. So just have a look at the clip first and we'll talk about it after. So yes, amazing bit of footage there. There's a little bit of a relationship between the two there going on, sniffing each other. Yeah, it's in, it was interesting. So he must have been checking out whether she was ready, and obviously maybe she's not ready just yet. Maybe she was just playing a little hard to get, I don't know. But interesting, very interesting to see what's happening there. So I need to go to my trial camera now and make the uh, actual time that the camera films for a, a lot longer. So instead of 15 seconds that I've got it set on now to sort of save uh, the memory card not running out too quickly, with clips I have to extend it to 30 seconds. I've also had the dusky antichinus coming into the nest, checking it out still. So that's been going on for some time since February going down into the nest checking it out and then leaving again so it's been in twice this week so that's awesome all right that's enough for now I'm gonna wander around the reserve look for any dusky antichinus running across the trails because they sort of do that now the males are building up to the breeding season as well so you, you see them on the tracks during the day a lot more than you'd ever do normally well, I've reset my trail camera. See there, put the lid back on. 
nesting box number one if you haven't seen it before let me give you a tour so this is an old log I found that was hollow and there's the entrance it's going in there made it into a nesting box by hollowing it out a bit more and mucking around with it putting that fiberglass top on with a cap I can put my XF400 on top there and film the Agile Antichinus live whenever I need to when everything's uh, working well for me here I come and film and get some beautiful images and audio as well because just down here you can see that cork I've shoved into a hole that I drilled in the side so I can put my shotgun microphone in there and get all those beautiful intricate little sounds of the babies or mum coming back to feed the babies all those sort of things right I'm standing on a platform three meters above the ground this is where I normally sit Let's see down there my bag my camera gear and sit on that stump there and the downtime I'm just looking around because I've got such a magnificent view everything around here I can see where the other agiles are around or the dusk antichinus or any other animal coming around that I might be able to film as well it yeah, been an awesome place got some magnificent footage from here and I'll continue to into the future That's one of my little tricks that I use to see whether the Agile Antichinus are nesting in hollows. When I see a hollow tree, it may be a good candidate for the Agile to go into. I'll shove a leaf into the entrance. So I'll come back tomorrow and if it's gone, I know that they're in there. He's still using it. So this one they, has been used through the winter. Just check up on it every now and then, put a leaf in. It's usually gone the next day. But I haven't checked it for a while and just wanted to know whether they're still there or not. It's a useful little trick that I use. Something I come up with there a couple of years ago to help me out, educate me on what's happening around the reserve without spending hours sitting here for no good reason. It's not being used, you know. I can be doing other things instead of sitting here and also saves me putting a trail camera out here too to check out what's going on i can use that in other areas with that it's just a simple little trick you see what's going on saves time so there you go come and check on it tomorrow see whether they it's active still or not first victim of the breeding season that is a dusky antichinus a male has met his doom now for those of you who don't know anything about Antichinus, there was 14 species of them around Australia and they all do the same thing. Breeding season comes, what kicks them off is all hormones and all different types of chemicals flood their bodies, pushes them on to mate with as many females as they possibly can. And it's that that kills them in the end, not mating. Well, finally, I get to tell the story, a flower bud that hasn't opened yet, and then transition to another flower in the background where the flower is open. So telling a bit of a story there about the silver wattle. So let's just run through how I set up for focus transitioning. All right. This is all an experiment today. I'm using close-up lens. And I wanted to see whether I could do a focus transition from a bud that's not open to one that is open. Can I do it? And if I can, what distance works the best? Finally, after two weeks of walking around the reserve, I find one that works out. So that's about 70 to 80 mil distance between the two. I have the polarizer on to try and cut down on glare. That's an experiment as well. It's all experimenting here and seeing what works. So what we do is we start recording now that it's settled down. So I have my foreground subject, the one that's not open yet, and transition to the one at the back. So we now have that flower 
nicely in there. It's playing around a bit so it'll be in and out of focus because I have the uh, close-up lens on. Don't know how, whether this polarizer is going to affect the image or not change the colors um, or just plain ruin things, who knows, but uh, it's all about experimenting, practicing and learning. I found another silver wattle that I can do a nice focus transitioning with but I've taken the close-up lens off and we're going for a standard transition so I have a bud here that's not open yet and about 600 millimeters away is a fl the flower buds that have opened I've got a little cluster there so that's nice so what we're trying to achieve here is that we have that nice distance where our foreground subject is nicely in focus everything else is blurred out and non-distracting is what we're hoping for and we've just got to plan that look around see anything in the background that's distracting that might give off a glare or anything like that which I do have a, a slight touch with those ferns in the background there because the sun is just up above me a little bit but I am getting a lot better light here than I was before. So it should work out okay. Setting up for focus transitioning, making sure that our foreground subject will be the only thing as, that our audience is going to be looking at. They're not going to be distracted by things in the background, taking their eye off the first composition, and then transitioning to the background composition where the foreground isn't a distraction anymore, it's blurred out. Well, my experiment with micro focus transitioning it's awesome it's a bit of a success I was a little doubtful at start whether I could do it but it works and I'll certainly be watching out for any more opportunities that come along and using the polarizer that didn't affect the camera at all it's worked really well another tool I'll be using for focus transitioning last week I mentioned that we've gone back into lockdown with uh, social isolation stage three in the state of victoria that i live in in australia it's feeling worse than last time i feel in prison this time because what they've done is try and contain everything and get it under control it's now spread to the outer suburbs and reaching right out to where i am so i'm on the outskirts of the outer suburbs so what they've done is to stop us from going out of this area that they've zoned us into rural areas where it hasn't spread is they have police cordoning off the way out so where I go to work in the mornings they've put up a blockade that you have to go through they check your rego and they ask you questions where you're going going to work that's fine so it's starting to affect me a lot more and I'm feeling a lot more hemmed in because of that we could be going into total lockdown stage four not really sure what that actually means but I'm assuming that we won't be allowed to leave our postcode so we'll be stuck in this area I probably won't be able to go to work 100% clear on those sort of things but it's that'd be bad really bad I'm thinking that we'll have to go off off your uh, letterbox number odd it off when you can go to the supermarket to get stuff and other things like that uh, and going for walks as well at least I can just jump over the fence and come into the bush here <laughs> I won't have to worry about that so yes yeah, it's not good in Australia it's bad but let me talk about this year now I've been around for a lot of years. I've had some shit years and I've had some amazing years, but I've never had a weird year. It's really weird this year. 
I've had some really tragic news with things around me, with family, neighbours, all those sort of things. But for every bad news I hear, it's quickly followed by good news. It's weird. I've never had this before. Now, the government has been paying companies JobKeeper Fund. So to keep people in work, so they don't sack everybody, that they keep some people, keep the industries going. They're giving companies 750, seven, $750 to each person that's working to keep them at work. My boss has been topping mine up to keep me there five days a week, so I renovate the place. Uh, it's just such a good opportunity. But this time, they've decided dropping my hours, so I'll be only working three days a week. So that's a bit of a hit to the hip pocket, big hit to the hip pocket. Lucky my wife works as well, so it's not going to be too bad for us. Um, but... <laughs> I was a little devastated, of course. I come home, I lodge my tax. It's tax time, that time of year. Um, they sent me an email back saying, confirming that I had, that it's lodged and I'll be receiving extra on top as a relief fund to stimulate the economy, I guess. And 750 bucks on top of what I'd be getting anyway. So... Wow, that's just amazing. That means I can buy my drone. So another amazing good thing has happened out of it. That I can now buy my drone. And I have. I've already bought it. As soon as I heard that, I thought, wow, I'm going looking for a bargain online. And I was looking for a second-hand one that had a Fly More combo. I'm after the Maverick 2 Pro. Uh... Yeah, I really wanted a bargain, make my money stretch as far as it could possibly go, hopefully with extra batteries and that sort of thing, for real bargain. Couldn't find a second-hand one, but I come across an amazing deal with the smart controller, which is good. Didn't really want to use the mobile phone. It's too small for me to see. Need something big. Amazing deal. 700 and something dollars less than their competitors. An amazing deal. Awesome deal, I thought. Beautiful. But then I see they're also doing as a promotion for their new company that they've made on on eBay. They're auctioning off a small amount of them. Okay, let's go into the auction, see whether I can get a better deal. Missed out on the first one. Went for uh, nearly 1900 thought, oh, wow, I missed out on the bargain there. I, I should have put 2000 in. So I did the next time, it went over. It was 2,300 and something. So I thought, right, let's do it again. There's another one up for auction as well. Bingo, got it. I put my bid up to 2,200 to see what would happen. Got it. For a steal, it really is still a really good deal. Didn't get under 2,000. It was 2,125 bucks. Bargain. Awesome deal for an already discounted uh, deal in the first place. So it's on its way. It'll be here next week for me to play ready for the exact time of year that I wanted to do my dramatic flyover of the reserve for my documentary. I wanted the wattle flowers out in full bloom, which they are at the minute. So I can do my dramatic flyover to the back of the reserve, bank to the left, come down the path, down the track, yeah, it'd be awesome for my documentary, the start of it, which means I can actually start my documentary. So it's exciting, but it's not something I wanted to buy. I definitely did not want to buy a drone. It came down to being a necessary thing to do, unfortunately. Going down that path of having someone come out and do it didn't work for me. To have a, a real professional come out, is more than half the price of the drone. So why not just buy one, utilise it for a while, sell it later on down the track, and uh, maybe get my the lens that I really want, that 100 to 400 L lens. Other good thing to come out of me not being able to work five days a week is I have 
four straight days to study the agile antichinus in breeding season. Now that is awesome. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, click on my pretty little faces down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at all the other crazy things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. Take it to my channel. I talk about photographing, filming in a frost environment, catch-ups on my studies with the agile antichinus and all sorts of things like that. Go on long hikes, make little documentaries out of them, go on holidays when there's no coronavirus and <laughs> make little documentaries out of that. Birds are chirping, what more could you want? Bloody freezing. And just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. Stay safe, stay out of the way of coronavirus, and I'll catch you on the next one. So yeah.